Welcome back to Darkness Within in Pursuit of Loth Nolder, where you find me here for the first time on the channel wearing my glasses. I have no leads on what I am supposed to do right now, so I'm just going to go to new locations until I find something new. So I can imagine that we're probably going to go somewhere very soon, and I'm excited for that. Um, I just don't know when or how we're going to do that. I don't know why we have this other map in our inventory that we seemingly haven't used yet. And I am just generally kind of baffled. I'm assuming I'm at a point in the game where I need to combine clues in my inventory, and I don't know what they are going to be. So if I have to, we may just start this one off with a, a hint to move in the right direction. To communicate with him, please use KD78GTA. Now, if I'm not mistaken, his remark on this was that it's an address? I mean, that's what he said, though, isn't it? Could it be an address? I kind of doubt it, but maybe it has something to do with, uh, the list of, like, map ciphers that are in, a Loth Nolder's desk. We'll go back to his office and see if we can turn anything up there. Nope, doesn't look like it. According to this book, Wolfry was a small town, which was renamed to Windlapse. I know Windlapse, it is just a small town. To my knowledge, it is the only distinguishing feature is its huge ancient cemetery nearby. Holy shit! No way! <laughs> no spoilers, no hints. I just opened up the book and I hit the magnifying glass button, but... Oh, that's... That's low-key so cheap. Like, I could have been looking for hours before I found that. This is a book that I already examined once, and now it retroactively has a clue in it. Okay, so Wolf's Prey was renamed to Windlapse, and it has a huge cemetery, and we know where that is. Does that mean we have a new location now? Oh, please tell me we have a new location. I would so fucking love to go somewhere new. No, we don't just yet. We're probably really close to one, though. Well, those are all the leads that I can think to follow, so I think I will go look for a hint. I've gotten pretty good about reading walkthroughs just enough to get a hint without having spoilers. Okay, so, open the book, Wellsmith Myths and Legends, underline the name of the town, which later changed to Windlapse. Okay, so I found that. Open the marked map. I'm supposed to look at this map again, and click on the place where Windlapse is now. So Wolf's Prey is the old name of Windlapse. Windlapse is a small town. I wonder where this mark is for in the town. The marked place in Wolf's Prey. Okay, is that... Just the clue that I needed to connect. Can I now connect that with Samuel William Poer? It wanted me to find that clue yesterday, actually. I did not do that. Sorry about the purring noises that you're probably going to be hearing. <laughs> actually, I'm not sorry. What? You'll get a call from Arthur, who reveals some very needed information. Uh, that never happened. Why am I not receiving this phone call that I need to get? Tisk tisk, darkness within. I must have missed something. I'm gonna have to backtrack a bit and read through the in, through the game. Oh, holy shit! Dear IB. So after we read this letter, and we hear this bit about there being a code, I think we can retroactively find clues in the previous letters. I remember this, this from a book I read a long time ago. It mentioned the sounds the Marco Polo heard in the Asian desert. Okay, this is this is really getting screwy. This, the automatic research pages button is not working for me anymore. That's cheeky. Heard in the central Asian desert of Taklik Makan. A place with no return. In the fourth and fifth letter, I have to underline IB. Barrett Bergman. This must be I.R. Bergen. Yeah. No doubt these are his initials. Yeah, we put this together. This is... It's hardly a clue, man. But what does any of it mean? Here we go. Mr. F.E. got in touch with one of our police friends. It seems they have a friend within the police department. I now understand why Clark told his brother not to go to the police regarding this matter. Oh, shit. Wait a second. Trust no one. Police are involved? Oh, no. 
Is this the missing clue? Police friends. And then he said, uh... Did he remove that clue already of... Clark saying, police warning? <laughs> what if it's us? Maybe we're their friend in the police department and we just lose our complete memory. Alright, okay, so this is... Here's what the game, what the walkthrough says. The code we found is a phone number. It's encrypted. You just have to sub out each of the numbers for what letter they are in the alphabet. That might have been a little bit easier for me to notice if uh, it was an American game and like I could recognize how many digits are in an American phone number. Okay, hopefully this will put us back on the track and get some scripted events happening that were supposed to happen already. Okay, I am just not smart enough to figure this shit out. Letters on the phone's buttons are used to encrypt the number. Oh, on the phone's buttons! I thought it meant letters of the alphabet. They were pulling a secrets can kill on me. Nobody's answering the phone. I better ask Arthur to find out who this number belongs to. So now we can talk to Arthur. Okay. Well, finally, we can do shit. So to be clear, these are all things the game wanted me to do on day four. And I, I guess it was a sequence break, but I ended up playing the game without doing them. All right, progress. Hopefully. Howard, where are you? I've been trying to reach you for days. Are you all right? That's right, it has been four yes. days. Yes, yes. Everything is fine. I've just been a little busy with some personal matters. Listen, I don't know. The reason why I'm calling, I need you to do me a favor. Yes, of course. I've got a phone number here, 537-8488. I need to know what address that is. No problem, Howard. I'll call you back when I found it. Thanks, Arthur. Okay. So then he's supposed to call us back. And that's supposed to happen at the start of this day. So when is that event scripted to happen? It's telling me to go find other clues that are in Ivar's house. Oh, we're getting the phone call now. Okay, so I guess it was on a timer. Steer me in the right direction, boy. Uh -huh. Hi, Howard. I found the address that you asked for. It belongs to Edward Braunball. You may have heard of him. That old fool who lives in Rowley, the town northeast of Wellsman. Rowley. 200 years ago, there were some major incidents in that town. In the end, the government had to step in. There was chaos. A lot of houses were burned down by some local Puritans. Uh -huh. Because of some strange hearsay about witchery and other primeval superstitions. At the time, the name of the town was Holston. After those incidents, the name was changed to Rowley. Great. Wow. Thanks for the information, Arthur. You're welcome. And by the way, what business do you have with Mr. Bromble? I heard he doesn't normally get along well with other people. Or are you still investigating that case? No. That's it's a personal point. thing. Thanks Don't worry about it, Arthur. Arthur. <laughs> okay, then. See ya. My buddy is just so, so yes. overprotective. I've heard the stories about this place. It has a small, strange building built long before the mansion itself. Some of the stories say the mansion was built here because of that earlier building. I remember a story from my childhood about how at night, the fishermen on the boats out at sea could see lights flashing from the small building, like signals to someone or something watching out there in the darkness. I've always wondered about this place, ever since I was a child. Edward Bromble. Discover the location of Mr. Bromble's mansion. Do we finally have a new location to go to? Holston. Hmm. This must be the location of Edward Bromble's mansion. According to the information Arthur gave me, Holston was the old name of the town which is now called Rowley. That's where his mansion is. No doubt this must be it. Okay. So can we actually go there now? Please tell me we can. 
Yes! Okay. Okay, that sucked. I, I hate having to get spoilers, but the game kind of shot itself in the foot with some of the progression there. There were some things that there weren't clues for that it feels like there should have been, and there were other things that it let me progress a day before finding them. All right. New location, though. Haven't done this in a while. An old mansion and a strange building which was built long before, set in a garden grove. Strange gossip surrounds this place and its long-term inhabitants. Oh, it's daytime! How pretty! <laughs> it's like a completely different game. So the guy who lives here, Bromble, uh, is apparently a dick, according to Arthur. You should watch out for him. But also... British people don't carry firearms, so I don't have anything to be afraid of. I think this door leads to the mansion's entrance. I need to find that ancient building which was mentioned in the letter. This is a really big garden. Alright, well, there's an old ancient ruin here. I was just trying to figure out where he found that out. Could you be the ancient building? Knock, knock. Hello there. Little crow. It's not polite to knock on the door so frequently. Well, at least he has manners. Am I going to turn around? It's going to be open. Nah. Well, that's it. <laughs> that's all the detective work I've got in me. seems no one is at the house. Did I try to open the door? I hope it's not locked. This is my lucky day, I guess. The front door wasn't locked. It's called... We do a little trespassing. Yeah, I wouldn't do this. <laughs> if I was investigating this case, I would not just be... Breaking into houses of people that I know have a reputation for being poor sports. Beautifully designed. Oh, these guys are so going to hit me with the jump scare. Like, the guy behind me is like, what the hell are you doing here? And I'm going to fucking implode and crumple in on myself when that happens. Flashlight? Here's a letter of some kind. What is that? A piece of paper. There are some numbers on it. You've lied to me. Oh, they're on the other side. 287. Interesting. It is covered with mud. I can use this. A muddy flashlight. Now, where am I going to be going that necessitates a flashlight? Also, I just stole that from this guy. Something's happening. Is this because you took the flashlight? What was that? It was an earthquake. Oh shit, we've heard about those. I'm knocking on the floor? What am I doing? Am I listening for, like, hollowness? Hmm. I think the floor is hollow. It's freaky. Okay. I don't know what to do about that yet. I don't have any tools to uproot it. Let's go in here. It's too dirty. I can't see through it. You know, I think I would actually be terrified of urban exploration. I don't think I could ever do that. Just people who, like, go into abandoned houses like this. It's too dirty, I can't see through it. I would have to be, like, with a fucking posse to feel comfortable sneaking into houses like this shit. Tower door? 
right up here. Oh, this place is pretty. The tower room is really fascinating. Composition for classical guitar. The composer's name is not legible. My old friend. I am currently at a train station. It's from Loth Nolder. Ooh, wow. Uh, I am currently at a train station and will be arriving at my next destination in a few hours. It is a village located in the forest. I have heard a lot about it. After this, I intend to visit some Oceanian countries. More importantly, I found some wooden sculptures which are also described by Wolfgang Schneider in the texts. I acquired before starting this journey. In my opinion, this authenticates his notorious writings. I am sure that all those sculptures have compartments in them. They have some sort of cover that I am unable to open and remove. Schneider's texts also mention that these were used to store some objects that are needed for preparing a particular mixture. I feel really tired and want to take a nap before starting to work on the texts again. Did I mention to you how confusing they are? Anyways, I will tell you more in my next letter. Till then, take care, loathe and older. We have a letter from Loth and Older. And it's not particularly interesting. Yes, wooden sculptures. When Loth went to Africa, he brought some wooden sculptures with him. Uh, who is his old friend, I wonder? Anything else on here? Is that the game's way of telling me there still is something? Freaky mask. Half empty bottle. Can't tell what's inside it. A very familiar looking mask. Very old magazine, can't even read the date on it. Telescope pointing toward the heavens. Can't tell what this painting is of. Gotta look at the treasure chest. Three digit combination, 287 I wonder. Chest is unlocked. in it. Some kind of broken amulet piece. Children of Dis. Children of Dis were one of the most important cults which were hidden in the darkness of the medieval world. Accurate information about this cult is not available because of its esotericism. Use of special initiation rites and except for some petroglyphs the absence of any written texts left behind by its followers. Even though its origins are not clear, it is older. It is thought to be an altered form of an older religious system. Because of the prevalence of an eye-like symbol, which is thought to be the coat of arms of the cult, it is believed that the cult once had a large following. In 1752, by dint of the French archaeologist Armand Rainer, information about the children of this became widespread. Rainer asserted that the cult worshipped a chthonic deity, and this deity, as the name of the cult affirms, was the ancient Roman god Dis Pater. The objects in the petroglyphs he found in his excavations supported this idea, and his research is still widely accepted today. Today, in light of some relics which were found in the archaeological excavations made at the foot of Northwood Mountain, and in some natural caves nearby, it was discovered that the cult had used hallucinogens in their forms of worship, thus resembling the Eleusinian mysteries. In most of the dig sites, carved copper and wooden bowls were discovered. In the caves, colorful petroglyphs depicted some kind of festival or religious rites. These petroglyphs generally depicted a group of human figures who carry bowls, dancing, or playing prim some primeval wooden or cattle horn-shaped musical instruments. In Northwood Mountain, similar tunnels have been found in some caves, which are a part of an amazingly complex cave system, and these are now under protection for further archaeological examination. If you're not picking this up, this is 100%. The children of this is the cult that we've been following. We've got the mushroom caves, the Eleusinian mysteries. I'm, sh I'm sure you put it together. And the eye-like symbol, which is their coat of arms. Good to know. Even though no original texts have been found which describe the religious traditions and lifestyles in the notes of some authorities, travelers and clergymen, some items have been detected which mention the children of this. I don't know how to say it. Children of this, children of these... <laughs> Although we cannot be sure about the disparate points of view of these writings, they are mentioned here in order to compare them with the archaeological discoveries at hand. When we examine these writings, we can see that the focus was on the religious thoughts and practices of the cult. For some, the cult was merely a crowd of people who were cursed witches, 
and for others, it was a group of anarchists who were against the accepted order and way of life. It can be understood quite clearly that for both, the children of Dis was an element of excessive fear. From time to time, the occult had to overcome great attempts to destroy it, including mobilization of military forces. But even these attempts were not enough to efface this strong religious group. Only a few writings detail the notorious religious traditions and practices of the children of Dis. Some of these writings are just partial observations, which were made from far away locations or simply accounts recorded from the narrations of third persons. One particular handwritten text, which dates back to the 16th century, gives us exciting information. The handwritten account, which was probably written by a clergyman, describes a secretly observed rite that he witnessed. The text outlines the behavior of a group of 25 people who were gathered around a smoking dig in a deep cave during a moonless night. After the group had repeated for a while some sentences in a monotonous tone, meaningless to the observer, they ate some kind of mixture, which was prepared by mixing some unknown substances, and then started a wild, ritualistic dance to the accompaniment of unseen drums. After a while, everybody behaved as though they were drunk, and some of them tried to catch some unseen objects while others screamed horribly. This description is accepted as proof of the usage of hallucinogenic substances in those unnamed festivals or rituals. After these observations, it is related that the drums were silenced and the group started to monotonously play some musical instruments, similar to the ones which were found in the archaeological excavations. Then the observer wrote that he could no longer be sure about what he had seen. From within the darkness of that continuously smoking dig, he wrote about something that he could not describe, something which had made him think that the darkness of the primeval cave might have tricked his eyes. A thing, a black reptile-like silhouette, hit the stone ceiling of the cave and caused frightful noises and tremblings. After that, he wrote that he had not waited to see what would happen next, but got away from that place as quickly as he could. Even though there are no simpler examples to compare with this test and order to verify to what extent the observer's tale is true, it is accepted as a valid proof because there are similarities between the archaeological findings, petroglyphs, bowls, and musical instruments, and what has been written. So this is like a documented history. I'm surprised it's the first time we're hearing about this. Let's try to take the, the magnifying glass through here. Uh, so this is totally the cult. I like symbol. According to this book, children of Dis use an I like symbol. Hmm. This sounds familiar. Children of Dis symbol. Yeah, you know what's going on. So it looks like the, the magnifying glass thing has stopped working for me. So I'm gonna have to start paying close attention. This potter? I guess there's nothing else in here. I feel like I'm missing something in that book. Uh, a seal piece from the chest. Can I piece these together or am I missing a part still? I'm missing a piece of that. Very interesting. I have an almost certainty that there's going to be someone waiting for me at the bottom of that trap door. And I really don't want to go down that trap door. I swear to God, there's going to be someone down there. There just has to be. Okay? So, fuck it, we're going to get it over with. You can't scare me. You can't scare me because I'm expecting it. I'm not scared at all. Okay, looks like we got out. I, sorry, I was just so fucking paranoid about that. Oh, God. I hate trespassing. I hate just, like, perpetrating little, little crimes like this. It does not do well with my nerves. Alright, picking up a day later. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Uh, I took off the glasses because I looked at myself in the footage and I looked like a guy who works in IT named Brian, so we're gonna do without those. <laughs> um... We have a hollow floor upstairs, and I'm assuming there must be a tool somewhere on the premises that will help us open it. Ooh, this is a basement, isn't it? Or a lower flow of some kind. I can't leave. My job here isn't done. Oh, that's the way we came in? What's the store over here, then? Oh, that's right, that's not a door at all. Okay, then there must be something close by that I've missed. Could it be you? Or you? Even a day later, I still must say I am terribly un at, un unease in this place. Because uh, this game has already proven to me once that 
Bad things will happen when I trespass in somebody else's home. Oh, I can move that first. Okay, I did not realize that bit. Okay, trapdoor. So no... No tools needed to pry it open. That looks very uncomfortably steep. Will I go down? Ah, let's take the plunge. Wherever the owner of this house is, they're probably down here. Dead rat? Wonder what killed him. There's a lantern here. There's a bunch of lanterns, actually. Oofy ah, spooky ah music. Lock is broken, I can't open it. There's like bars on all these windows. Some of them are locked, some are broken locks. I guess we will interpret that as we go. This one's open. It's got a key in it. And a piece of the amulet thing. Is that enough to put that amulet together? I think it might be. Maybe we're missing a fourth piece. Please don't be like a Blackwood Society meeting on the other side of this door. I would really just hate to, like, awkwardly walk in on a cult meeting right now. Someone's here. Unless that was us coughing. Maybe a prisoner? Fucking reptile head, dude. Who's coughing? Please, sir, cover your cough. Maybe it's us. A strange symbol. That's gonna be where the amulet goes once we find the last piece. They look realistic. Since sinisterly watching and waiting for something to happen. I think it's us coughing, actually. This place is being hotboxed. Probably more freaking Versahi. That's going to be where it goes. Maybe I have enough pieces and I just plug them in here. Is it supposed to be the Star of David? Well, no, no, no. Nothing happened when I put it all together. It's got the same little configuration that the, uh other thing did. You know, like the three on top, like the wooden statue. And we take it all with us. It seems like whatever that's for, we can't solve it now. Could something be missing? That door might just be open. It is. What is this strange antechamber? This shit's antediluvian. I smell a puzzle. This looks like a big puzzle. The music changed. The music noticeably changed once I got those. What is this shit about? Sarcophagi adorn the walls. What is the meaning of this? What did I just pick up? Strange metallic object. Oh, it's a palanquin. That's what this is. It's one of those things that like, uh, you know, like in the old ancient Egypt stories, like the, the slaves all carry a throne on their back and like the pharaoh rides in it. Interesting. Half darkened sun. There's five of them. This one has the strange eye. Human body. Two human bodies. Was there anything else inside here? I don't think so. This is gonna go in the middle of the floor, isn't it? In front of the freaking statue of Killer Croc. Strange symbol. Okay. 
truly. Maybe this goes on that other door, too. Yeah, that did it. Now what? I'm not... I'm not so sure how I'm supposed to configure this, but... Maybe guessing and checking long enough will get it for me. Seems like there's only so many configurations. It's a key. It's a really fucked up key. Hold up. I see it. Okay. Half circle. One circle. Two full circles. This should be it. No, I can't open it. Is this hint anything helpful, or is this just stuff I've already pieced together? Try to examine your inventory. There may be some clues regarding how to position the seal piece on the metal door. Well, the thing about that is there's not in my inventory. That puzzle is, uh, <laughs> on the floor in the main antechamber. Right? This one's got a star on the top of it. Does that just mean it goes on top? I mean, getting the pieces in the door is not so difficult to figure out. How about this thing? If that star on the back of the one piece is a clue, maybe that's its way of telling me it's right side up? Um... There's no star here. Now hold up, right? One second. The symbol for Holstone is the same symbol that is on the map. But how does this help me? I, I can't think of any way that that helps me, but that could be what the game was referring to. Open Clarksfield's notes to four, two out of four, and underline statues for another clue. I can now underline this for a clue. These statues sound like the one in Mr. Bromble's underground hall. These places must have a connection. Is that important? <laughs> no. No, you can't, you can't just, like, recall a document from five hours earlier and then suddenly say this is retroactively a clue. Like, I, I underlined that statue's note, like, episodes ago, and you had nothing to say about it. The goal of this puzzle is to place the three blue seal pieces you collected correctly, and then turn it using the turn key. A clue to it is on the back of the old map you took from the roll desk in Ivar's. Really? This thing? I did look at the back of this earlier. Okay, so the star is on that side. The top piece, this has a star on it. And so when I take this piece and I put it in, that's the bottom. Oh my god, I was assuming that was the top piece. No, it's not necessarily the bottom. It can go anywhere. I think it's supposed to go on that side is what it's telling me. Okay, I was assuming because they snap in like nothing that they each go on a specific side. So now I want the double circle to be in at 9 o'clock, like right here. Like that. That's it. Okay. I think the metal door is unlocked. Okay, this looks terrifying. But before... I, I, wanna, I don't know how I feel about that puzzle. I, I was making a mistake in that I couldn't figure out that you could you could place those blue seal pieces in a different order, because the game was just snapping them into an automatic place. I guess it depends on when you put the first one down. It could have been communicated easier. Maybe I'm just stupid and it is communicated easier on easier difficulty. Uh, cutscene? What timing? batteries are dying. Well, you did just find this piece of shit flashlight on your own. It's not like you were brought it and were prepared. I know that you can't have a lot of things in the fucking UK, but I'm pretty sure you can at least carry a flashlight. 
what fucking torches you would call it. We're not getting in that water. We're not doing that. I'm telling you right now, you're not getting in that water. There are tunnels on the other side. I can't see a way to get over there. Well, I'm glad that we agree. There's no way over. What the? <laughs> what is that thing? What is happening? I need to get out of here. Yeah, I like that idea. Let's fucking leave. Let's leave this terrible place that we should have never trespassed in. It's locked. Not even like a Nancy Drew, it's locked. That shit's just... Uh... I'm ready to wake up. Tell me this one's a nightmare. Please tell me this one is a nightmare. How did we get up to the top? What just happened? What was that thing I experienced down there? The Versahi. Is it possible that I just imagined all this? Am I really going mad? Can't tell the difference between the real and unreal anymore. What is happening to me? They're not going to let me get out of this place without another jump scare. Where's the owner? Where's Bromble? I'm so not looking forward to it. But as soon as I leave, he's going to be like, Who are you? And I'm going to fucking jump. No, really? We chillin'? This is a really big garden. I guess I'm free to leave. And never come back. I really like this game's aesthetic. And the story has been really good too, but... I'll leave the mansion. It really... Just... Leaves you in the dark a lot of the time. And I'm starting to wonder if that's the actual game design, or if that's just me having picked this hard difficulty. Okay, well, that wasn't that wasn't all for nothing. We did get these five things. What did I just do with the other one? Where could I be popping these tokens into? Think, 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 think. Where somewhere there's like missing, missing round indentations. Maybe the tunnels under Ivar Bergen's place. Like nothing feels better than when you're playing a harsh hard game like this, and you figure things out on your own. <laughs> I'm worried that I'm just gonna get myself stuck so bad that I'm never gonna piece something together again without a hint. What frustrates me the most right now is that I have a pretty damn good lead as to several locations of, like, this is a place I need to go, this is a place I need to go, where, like, there's a cemetery, and there's, like, ancient ruins, and a cave... But until I find the minute detail that the game wants me to find to progress, I can't actually do anything about my hunches. Tisk tisk. And I'm sorry, am I missing one of those little tokens now? Where did it go? I had five and now there's only four. It's the one that's of a single man. Is that intentional that it's missing? Maybe it is. Maybe that thing in the basement took it from me. Huh? Fuck was that? Was that the prisoner? Like the, the guy in here? The game reacted to that like it was something important. I'm fucking confused. Was that empty before? I don't think one of these things was empty before. It says go back home. Is that it? I'm just supposed to go back home after that event? Alright, are you gonna go to sleep now? Well then, sir, 
What are we looking for at home? Voicemail. Message one. Hidden message. Here's something strange on the answering machine. Uh, what am I supposed to gather from that? Dude, I don't know what I'm supposed to infer from that. I mean, it was freaky, but... Why does the game want me to come back to my home at this point? Elaborating more on what I said the last time, when that letter said we have friends in the police, I really do... I am starting to think that I am the friend in the police. I think I am leading like a double dissociative life as a cult member. Which is why that dude, Gerald at the cabin was like so surprised to see me. Or he's just like, ah, oh, the raid, you're here early. Or he wasn't surprised is what I mean. I think that that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm a member of this clan. That's just freaky. That's just plain freaky. Before we move on, we need to find out where to go next. Open up the think frame. Combine, combine the clues, the tombs, with the marked place in Wolfrey. Okay, so we have to combine clues now. I have the marked place in Wolfsbury. Do I have the tombs? Tombs. 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 Nothing in here is about tombs. Is this another one of those classic, you missed a dialogue thing from like two hours ago that's now retroactively important. What is this about thinking of the tombs in the marked place? Where do I get the clue about a tomb? Reading one of the documents in the cabin. All right, we're not going to go f just non-stop spoilers, so we will now go back to the cabin, and we will reread everything until we find this clue to unravel the mystery further. You know what? It was the one referring to the maps, wasn't it? Saying that, like, we've been locating the locations of the tombs because of the maps or something? Using the marker in the old maps is a great way to find the places. Okay, I thought that said the tombs, but it didn't. We have discovered... Oh, here we go. The most important places we have found is the ancient cemetery that hides the tombs. Are you serious? Oh, no, that doesn't even count. Uh, I was gonna say, I remember underlining ancient cemetery and finding nothing. If the game wanted me to underline the tombs instead of ancient cemetery, I would have been mad. Is there- can I just get an auto-clue check on here? He says nothing interesting. I mean, well, that says the tombs. I was supposed to be finding tombs. Literally tomb to tomb. Maybe it's on the other desk. God knows there's no shortage of letters here. Shalif bin Omar. Oh, hold up, listen to this. And we have found a palanquin there, which contains some objects. That's what we just found underneath the Bromble place. Uh, oh, hold up, wait, they're talking about him. Happily, I want to declare to you that the EB problem has been solved. That's Edwin Bromble. The little building in the garden is under our control now, and we've already started to examine it. Since we couldn't take that old fool's house in ordinary ways, we have used the last and most direct solution. They fucking killed Bromble. Oh, shit. Can I- can I make a clue of that? That Bromble's dead? So E.B. is Edward Bromble, as Arthur mentioned. I can. We have used the last and most direct solution. If this is not a clue to you, I'm- I want your badge and your gun on my desk. Hurrah, fucking Howard. Old Fool's House. Who else called Edward Bromble an old fool before? Arthur did, didn't he? Whoa, wait. Wait, are you saying fucking Arthur's with them? The most direct solution. This is a clue, though. Most direct solution. No? Wait. Wait, what am I uncovering? That, oh, that old fool was not just a throwaway. That was a clue clue. I'll look at that hint later. Someone else called him a fool. The only other person we've heard talk about Edward Bromble is fucking Arthur. And that was, like, earlier this episode, over the phone. Hi, Howard. I found the address that you asked for. <laughs> it belongs to Edward Braunball. You may have heard of him. That old fool who lives in Rowley. That I've heard enough. 
Can I combine these two? No. Real. Really? Old fool dialogue where he literally says there must just be something missing. There must just be like a third piece missing from this. Fuck it. I'll go through everything one by one. Police friends, maybe? Oh, God. Now I remember everything. Arthur called Edward Bromble an old fool. You found a secret. And the things Mr. Field said about not going to the police. Is it really possible? Arthur. My friend. Is one of them. <laughs> Shit. Backstabber. Find the true intention. Wait, it says Arthur may be one of them, but that makes it sound like it is him. Arthur had called Edward Bromble old fool, and the things Mr. Field said about not going to the police makes me think that Arthur is working for them. I know this is crazy, but I can't take the risk. I have to be careful around Arthur. Okay, hold up. This could be like a major, major diversion trying to steer me away from my theory that I'm actually the informant, and I'm just like in on it with the cult. But fuck, that was... Oh, that was eerie. Okay, I still haven't found the tombs reference that I'm looking for. To take that old fool's house ordinarily. So, well, hold up. Th this raises another question. This is a letter from Ingvar Birdman, whatever his name is. But he uses the same terminology that Arthur does. So either this is a letter that was written to Arthur from Ingvar Birdman, whatever his name was. But the alternative is that Arthur is Ivar Bergen. And that's like his, his alias. That one's maybe a bit far-fetched. I bet it's just that he's the brother. Um, blah, blah, blah. Timabor. Dim flame scene. <sighs> I'm scared about Arthur now. I, I don't trust him. Shit. Hey, look at me scooping up those secrets, though! Okay, according to Howard, nothing in that document is important. Special wooden sculptures that Mr. Kerwin brought home from Africa. Were there any other documents in this whole place? I kind of don't think there were. There was maybe one in the book upstairs. Okay, low-key, I've been, like, brewing a rant for this whole episode about how I'm really getting frustrated with the document search mechanic and that I think it could be handled in a lot of better ways, and I still feel that way. But I'm kind of giddy after that Arthur revelation. That was kind of fucking sick. <laughs> Okay, okay, here's here's another book. Um, maybe it's written in here. Old text gave us information. The locations of the tombs. Are you serious? You're not gonna accept this one either? It's right bloody there, man. How about the aforementioned tomb? How about dark tombs? How about the magnifying glass? Some tombs are mentioned here. Are those people looking for a crypt? <laughs> Come, okay. Case in point, why I'm falling out of love with the document scan system. There's like five different mentions of a tomb in these two paragraphs, but only one of them is a clue. If you were to like take another pass at a game like this, I would make it so that Several, like, any number of different relevant instances that you underline could lead you to the same clue. Like, I could underline this mention of the tombs, and I could get that clue to the tombs. Or I could underline this mention of the tombs, and he could make the result of the tombs. Just not that the one I didn't check is the one that I needed. Sorry, I just, I have to be a little critical of the games I play, so I'm not just constantly sucking them off, because I know that I can be like a, I can be an insufferable optimist at times. But that, that is something that just just slightly chafes my ass, I cannot lie. Marked place, the tombs. I know an old burnt-down cemetery close to Windlaps. Could the tombs be there? I'd better visit the cemetery. The old cemetery in Windlaps. Alright, alright, let's go. Let's fucking go. I'm actually going to save the game, because... <laughs> especially after that Arthur reveal, I'm a little concerned. Uh that we may be coming up on the end now. Gosh, I've misspelled every single save game in here. My hands just have dyslexia.
Oh, let's go, Owl. Are we about to go Statement of Randolph Carter up in this bitch? This huge and ancient cemetery is located a few miles from the town of Windlaps. Strange phenomena abound in this area, where people have reported hearing muffled sounds or screaming, and have seen dark and grotesque silhouettes moving. I get to use my Lovecraft spooky voice again. So, this place is a cemetery. I haven't gotten to, like, genuinely read something spooky and interesting in a while. And the sun's going down. Oh, boy. So, uh... Little... Little goofy, like, tidbit about me that I'm excited about. Just I, I think I might as well share this now. Is that, uh... I... Like I said, in my school, I'm, I'm in film school. Before I was on, like, the editing track, I was actually dabbling and like directing and shit and for one of my projects my sophomore year i made a 10 minute adaptation of hp lovecraft's short story the statement of randolph carter and so i know that story inside and out and it was it was a pretty mid adaptation like half of it looked really good and then we went to go shoot outside and it looked terrible but bottom line i it's a story that i love inside and out and it's about two men traveling to an ancient forgotten cemetery and finding a false tomb with like a set of stairs that leads somewhere into the earth in them and it's really it's really short but it's imaginatively it's imaginatively done and i'm i'm kind of hoping we get some randolph carter vibes here because i think that'd be pretty cool what kind of cemetery is this can i get buried here this is fucking cool i remember someone was buried here it was in that note samuel william power on the note in the secret room of the cabin. What was it? Poer. You see, I knew that. You don't have to remind me of these things. I better check the registers, beginning with the letter P. I may find the location of his crypt. Yeah, he's gonna be right next to uh, Paul Esther Givens, I bet. Hmm. I can't see the surname Poer here. Was he really buried here? This is gonna come back to my... Yeah, my theory that I originally had. Poer is, is an anagram, isn't it? I can't see the surname Poer here. Was he really buried here? What? How could I interpret this? How could you encode the name Samuel William Poer to mean something besides the name Samuel William Poer? Samuel William would give me SW. I saw that there were crypts outside marked in cardinal directions. Does this mean southwest? Is there a southwest plot of the cemetery? It's the east side. It's the west side. I think this is just the exit over there. So I, I think it's just an east and west. This is the location I've wanted to go to all game. Love me a goddamn spooky Scooby Doo cemetery. Let's fucking go. I remind you all that this game began with Howard Laraid in an asylum saying that they say I'm mad and they found me digging in a cemetery. This path leads to the depths of Northwood Forest. I can't leave this place now. That's where the forest is. Oh, shit. Shit. Oh, it's getting good again. I think we, we were in a lull for a little bit. We were doing our, our desk work part of the detective job. Now we're out in the field. What else could be in here? Ta -ta -ta. Why can I look at this screen? You just want me to believe that it's a, a useless screen? Just, just to hit your... Over 100 interactive screens, stay tuned for danger quota. Alrighty then, I guess I believe you. Screwdriver? A dagger? Oh shit, that's no ordinary dagger, that's like a stiletto. That's an artifact. It's got blood on it too. 
on the handle of all places. I wonder if there was a room up there. There's no way of getting up there now, old chap. This place looks like it was intentionally destroyed by someone. Oh, really? Are you suggesting that there's something up there that they didn't want me to find? That some sneaky, tricky gumfoot like myself wouldn't... Gumshoe, rather. <laughs> wouldn't piece together, huh? What are my ops trying to hide from me? All my ops are eldritch beings. What's up with the screens in this place? There are so many screens that are like... Suspiciously empty. Damn. Uh, decisively. There's nothing on this page which can be underlined. So... I guess there's nothing for me to look for in the books. We'll go out and look through the rest of the cemetery. East side. Right? Yeah, east side. This is a huge place. I'll probably find nothing without knowing where I'm going and why. Okay. Love this music. I'm gonna bump the fuck out of this music in the post. Are you gonna say the same thing after go west side? Huge place. Seems to me like I gotta start rubbing some brain cells together. Must be a clue we're looking for. You know what, actually? Scratch that. I am going to go back to Ivar's place real quick. And I want to reread and really consider the context of when Samuel William Power was mentioned. Because if they're alluding that the name is a cipher to uncover something else, then that sh can surely be inferred by the intonation. With the aid of the map, we discovered the place where the ones who will be summoned in order to achieve our goal lay. Even though the old texts gave us information about them, the locations of the tombs were not specified due to the need for complete secrecy. So complete secrecy, that already sets the precedent that we're going to be speaking in code. The discovery made last month by Mr. Kerwin was important. They are in the crypts below a tomb, which stands in a very old cemetery in which interments had prohibited some time ago. The aforementioned tomb is registered in the name Samuel William Poor. As a result of this information, it was determined who would be awakened from their long sleep. All the preparations for the turning back were done under the sign of the Star of Pleiades by Mr. Kerwin. It was only a matter of time. The ones who are waiting silently in their dark tombs for this day come to return. Everything will have begun. I don't know. This power business is kind of throwing me for a loop. 